Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle, thanks for joining us. We're pleased to be able to visit today with Senate candidate and former Dallas Mayor Tom Leppert. Tom, thanks for coming in today. It's great being with you, thanks for having me. You are former mayor of Dallas mm -hmm. from 2007 to early 2011. You were known as a common sense solutions, helped the business environment, mm -hmm. reduced crime, helped improve uh, some of the education programs in the city to the extent you could at mayor. But yet now you're out there volunteering to run for the U.S. Senate to replace Kay Bailey Hutchison. You're one of nine candidates. I want to just jump right in and have you answer the question first of all. What for our viewers is is your couple issues or what distinguishes you from your other competitors? Well, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, I'm not a professional politician. I haven't been in elected office. Kind of got talked into it five years ago. And as you point out, we did some good conservative things that governments usually don't do. But I think what I really bring to this race is 25 years of running businesses, small and medium all the way to large, five different industries, and the challenges out there on the economic side of it. And if we don't address the economic issues, both the fiscal and growing a stronger economy, in this decade, then unfortunately we're not going to be in a position. We're going to see our country in a slow downward spiral. So when people come in and politicians talk about creating jobs and cutting spending, they've never done it. I've been actually doing it for decades. I want to get to jobs here in a minute, as jobs I'm sure is issue number one, number two, and number three. Right. But uh, before we started here, you mentioned you're going to be in Milam County tonight. You've mm -hmm. been in Denton County, San Antonio, Dallas, some of the major cities. Right. What Tell us what the mood of the Texas voter is right now. What are you hearing in terms of their concerns, but particularly just their general mood right now? I think they're concerned about the economy. I, I think there was a point at which they were concerned about their grandchildren. Now they're concerned about themselves when they see the fiscal mess in Washington, all of the debt, the deficits mm -hmm. that are coming. And I think they're really worried about their jobs. At one point it was their neighbor's jobs. Now I think people are worried about their own jobs. I think there's a real concern, kind of a hesitancy, and almost kind of a, a real concern over what that economy is going to be as we go forward. And uh, we're starting to hear a little bit of discussion about the budget in Washington. A transportation bill was passed last week by one of the bodies in Congress, but certainly all the air last week was sucked out or devoted to uh, the issue of Obamacare in the Supreme right. Court hearing. Tell us what your general thoughts on the Obamacare issue are, and then I want to get in and ask you if you've got some solution-oriented uh, comments that you can share with us, but what in general is the response you think to the Obamacare well, dilemma? I, I feel very strongly that it needs to be repealed. The reality of it is, is I don't agree with mandates. I don't think government should be dictating what you and I buy. Uh, clearly, as we saw when we got into the contraception mandate, there's a whole host of different issues that will follow that. The government's going to have to decide what coverages there are, what behaviors they want to award, what they don't. Again, I don't think government should do that. I think that should be determined by you and me. But then the third reason is probably the biggest one, and that is we can't afford it. We mm -hmm. simply, mm -hmm. the numbers are still to be developed in a lot of ways, but all indications are high-risk pools are running two to three times. Clearly, the number of the companies that will opt out of this is going to be much higher than they anticipated. It's not going to be a cost of four or five hundred billion. It may very well be one and a half to two trillion dollars. We can't afford it. Now, most people say repeal Obamacare, mm -hmm. but we've gone one step further. I think one of the problems that we made as Republicans is that we didn't put a solution forward. What we've laid out is a solution. It always helps to be for something generally. Absolutely. In a if you're going to lead, policy right? Debate. If you're going to lead, you have to have solutions. If you're not, if you don't put solutions on the table, you're not a leader. And so we put one that builds on the private enterprise system, brings the decisions back to the patient and the doctor, and we think addresses a lot of the cost issues. Doesn't agree, address 100%, but it addresses the biggest issues that are out there. We start with prevention. The idea, much like other type of insurance, that if the risks are higher, then that's reflected. We've got an element that allows and awards good behavior from an economic standpoint in terms of the pricing of it. Mm -hmm. Second thing we use is health savings accounts to have patient the patient so they've got skin in the game. So make them very robust, allow them to be deductible for either the employer or the employees, so the employees in a similar situation that the employer is, and then allow the money to be pulled out. So when a doctor suggests that there's 10 things he wants to do to you, you're sitting there saying, hey, hold it, that may be my car or my television. All of a sudden, they've got skin in the game. Next piece of it, when you think about healthcare, it's one of the only industries that's kind of procedural based. You think of everything else we buy, it's outcome based. We need to switch it so it's outcome based so that the doctor then is part of the economic decision, you have much more transparency, you have a better assessment and better understanding of what quality is. Quality comes to the surface. 
Next thing, open up the competition. Allow policy to be sold across state lines. Allow small businesses to pool so that they can have the same type of buying power that a larger business does. And then the final piece is tort reform. Eliminate venue shopping, cap punitive damages. If you did those sorts of things, it'd be much more competitive. You're relying on the private sector. The doctor and the patient are engaged at the decision-making level, which they should be. And your transparency, your quality really increases. You've touched on a number of, of of subjects there. Great comments. Again, folks, thanks for joining us. We're visiting with former Mayor Tom Leppert of Dallas, now Senate candidate to replace Kay Bailey Hutchison. Drill down, if you would, though, a little bit, Mayor, and talk about one of the pr the prominent issues from last week, and that was mandates. How, how about your position on mandates? I'm against mandates. Again, I think uh, government shouldn't be dictating what we buy. And once we start down this, as I said earlier, it's really a slippery slope, both in terms of what we saw in the con contraception mandates when we look at it relative to health care, mm -hmm. but just think of so many other things that all of a sudden, if we allow this, the government can start mandating what we do. That's a slippery slope, and it, it comes back to a very simple thing. What the president's tried to do is say he believes in a policy, and that policy should trump our liberties and our freedoms. And I simply it's a big concern in the I primary voters' mind. Absolutely. I simply disagree with that. Again, I think we need to understand that the Constitution is just as important today as it was several hundred years ago. And it's the what and the how. But the why is the Declaration of Independence. God, creator, inalienable rights. Those rights didn't come from a government. They came from a creator. And a government can't take those rights. Because once they start taking rights, we need to understand it's a zero-sum game. You can't replace those. Once mm -hmm. they're gone, there isn't something that all of a sudden is going to compensate for it. And, and finally, again, I can appreciate your comments there. I can tell you've put some thought into this and have been sharing it on the campaign trail. Finally, to wrap up is the issue of jobs. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage folks, because it's on your website, go to tomleppert.com where you've got a, what, 60-page-plus jobs plan. And, and if we can wrap up, talk about your jobs efforts in Dallas, but more particular, what you're thinking here in the future as a candidate we can do to help the economic conditions of our country right well, now. Well, again, to me, it's not an academic exercise. The last position I had, we created 2,300 jobs. Those are real jobs. I understand how it's done. It's not a speech to me. I actually understand how to do it. As you pointed out in our program, most detailed comprehensive, we think any senatorial candidate's ever put out. And what we do is talk about taxes and how we change the taxes. Again, specifics. We talk about the spending, to reduce the spending at the government level, both today and tomorrow. We talk about regulation, again, very specific, ranging from eliminating Davis-Bacon to having more congressional oversight on regulation. We talk about the health care and putting a solution forward. We talk about energy and putting it in the right terms, not energy policy, but in terms of regulatory problems that we have. And then we finally talk about how do you change the culture of Washington, which I think is a big thing. We've got today politicians that are back in Washington, and they have pensions, they have health care programs mm -hmm. that have no relation to what any business here in Texas can offer. We need to eliminate. We need to eliminate the hypocrisy. I've said the first bill that I put forward makes those benefits that Congress and their staff have, so pension plans, health care, et cetera, no better than the midpoint of the private sector. We have to eliminate the hypocrisy. If we have people that are serving us, they have to serve us. They can't have a better financial deal than we have. Talking about uh, making Congress have to be under the same laws that they make us citizens. That's exactly right. It's called accountability. Well, candidate Leppert, appreciate you coming in and spending your busy time, uh, busy day. I know you've got here today. Appreciate that effort to come by. I hope you'll come back and visit with us again for another edition of Insider TV. Folks, we've been visiting with Senate candidate Tom Leppert. Be sure and visit TomLeppert.com to learn more about the former mayor of Dallas. And remember, the primary is coming up here on March on May 29th. May 29th. Appreciate your time, thanks folks. For thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Cardle. Remember, you're either an insider or you're not. <laughs>